Hello class and welcome to this video lecture. For this one, we will cover ASR04, Preliminary Engagement Activities. In our course outline, we are now on the fourth topic, Preliminary Engagement Activities, and consequently, this is also the start of our discussion of the steps in the audit process. Our references for this topic are as follows. So the first one, we have PSQC1 or Philippine Standards on Quality Controls redrafted. So quality controls for firms that perform audits and reviews of financial statements, other assurance and related service engagement. We also have PSA200 revised and redrafted. Overall objective of an independent auditor and conduct of an audit in accordance with PSA. We'll also have PSA210 redrafted agreeing on the terms of audit engagement so which will be the main standards that we will refer to in our discussion about preliminary engagement activities. And finally, we have PSA 220 redrafted, quality control for an audit of financial statement. So the first one, PSQC1 and PSA 220, so they are similar in the sense that both standards discuss quality control standards. So the difference is their scope. So PSQC1 cover quality controls for firms no, that conduct audit and reviews of financial statements, other assurance and related service engagement. So whereas PSA220 focuses on quality control over the audit of financial statements only. So in this video lecture, we will discuss the following items. So the first one we have the overview of the risk-based audit process, which we have already seen in the previous video lecture. So we'll just uh, cover, uh, we'll just uh, review it. So for the purposes of uh, determining where we are in the roadmap of the audit process. And then we will discuss in detail the preliminary engagement activities of the auditor. So these are the steps that an auditor performs before accepting an audit engagement from his or her clients. So we will also cover communication with predecessor auditor, which is actually part of the auditor's preliminary engagement activities. We will also consider, uh, consider the factors that the auditor will, will uh, note on continuing or in evaluating continuing clients or those uh, what we consider as recurring engagement. We'll also discuss the preconditions of an audit, so meaning what are the factors that the auditor has to consider before accepting an audit also. We will also discuss the terms of audit engagement and the engagement letter. And finally, we will discuss uh, changes in terms of engagement. So let us proceed to the first section. So the first section is the overview of the risk-based audit process. This is the same roadmap that we discussed in our earlier video lecture about risk-based audit process. So we mentioned that there are three phases or major phase of the risk-based uh, risk audit, so which includes first the uh, risk assessment, second is uh, developing the risk response, and finally concluding and reporting. So take note that in the risk-based audit methodology, so it's very important or imperative for us auditors to identify and assess first the risk on material misstatements and the financial statements of our clients so that we can prioritize our audit effort so when we are developing our response. As mentioned in the previous video lecture, nowadays we cannot examine everything, all documents of our clients. It's just not feasible. So we need to prioritize, we need to identify which areas we have to focus on in performing our audit procedure. So that is why we have this first uh, phase in our risk-based audit process, what we consider as the risk assessment phase. So during the risk assessment phase, what we do is that we evaluate our client before accepting them, before accepting them as our uh, client for the audit of their financial statements. So because, for example, if the client is uh, too risky, then it will uh, increase no, the risk on the part of the auditor when we associate ourselves with clients, for example, that are too risky or those that lack integrity. So another thing that we perform at this space is to understand the business of our client so that when we develop our response, 
we know how to deal no how 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 uh, for example uh, their business works and how those uh, business uh, activities of them affect their financial statements and therefore we can develop our appropriate response so on this part we will go first with the preliminary engagement activities which is part of what we call client acceptance and continuance so because the key concept here is that not all clients or not all prospective clients are required to be accepted by the auditor as auditors we can choose our client if we know or if we uh, believe no, that the client lacks integrity and therefore will increase the reputational risk on the part of the auditor so we can decline such client so because again the main concept here is that we do not associate ourselves with clients who lack integrity so that is why we have this uh, first phase preliminary engagement activities so now what do we do during this phase of the audit process so during preliminary engagement activities we evaluate whether we will accept the client so under what we call the client acceptance and continuance procedures and we establish the basis of the engagement so th these are the two important steps that we have to perform before starting any audit engagement so we go to the first one we have client acceptance and continuance so during client acceptance and continuance procedures we consider our clients integrity so because we mentioned earlier that we cannot associate ourselves with client who lack integrity so at this phase of the audit we have to check the background of our client check whether uh, their officers their management are uh, someone that uh, we can work with so considering their background their behavior their past performances we also consider the competence of the audit team now our part to perform the audit engagement so to check whether we have the availability and the, the time and resources to perform the audit engagement so remember in our discussion in assurance principles we mentioned that it is a violation of our ethical requirements to accept uh, engagement for which we do not have the appropriate expertise or competence and uh, speaking of ethical requirements that's the last part that we have to consider so whether we can comply with ethical requirements so particularly independence so we mentioned independence our previous in our previous video lecture so that is also what uh, we have to consider here in audit of financial statements so given that the audit of financial statements is an assurance engagement so client and uh, client acceptance and continuance procedures will minimize no, the likelihood of us auditors being associated with client whose management lacks integrity so because for auditors for cpas reputation is everything so it will be very difficult for us to continue with our career or practice if our reputation is tainted so let's go to the first part so considering client integrity in considering client integrity we perform such procedures like reviewing the client's documents no? these documents include financial statements annual reports that they submit to sec for example or to uh, the stock exchange like pse so income tax returns that they file with government agencies so we review whether these uh, documents uh, signify any any indication that uh, they lack integrity so for example if they file or if they are not filing this uh, regular statutory reports on time then there might be problem on their companies so that would uh, cause a red flag or that would uh, uh, indicate no that this client might be problematic so we also inquire with third parties like bankers legal advisors investment bankers and the general community or business community we can also do a background search no, about our client so from the news for example whether there are articles or there are information that uh, may paint uh, a bad picture about the company or prospective client so another important step is to communicate with a predecessor auditor 
So we communicate with predecessor auditor. So to understand the better this uh, prospective client, so we ask matters such as uh, those bearing with integrity of the management and uh, the reasons why, for example, uh, the client changed their auditor. And finally, we also consider other circumstances. So there are also other sources of information that uh, we can get with regard to our prospective client. So we can communicate with existing and previous providers of professional accountancy services to the client. That, that is why in the previous slide, we mentioned about communicating with a predecessor auditor. We can also inquire other firm personnel, for example, if in the same auditing firm that we're working for, there are other engagement teams that has already worked with with our prospective client. So in third parties, as mentioned earlier, so like bankers, legal counsel, business community, industry peers, and as well as background search of relevant databases, databases or uh, news article or uh, publications, different publications about the entity.